In this video, I'll be drawing out the blood supply to the head of femur. In particular, I want to look at how this blood supply changes during our lifetimes, and how these differences between young and old patients can be important. First, let's look at the blood supply in an adult. For this, we need to draw the proximal end of the femur, starting with the rounded head, coming down into the femoral neck, and then drawing the proximal end of the shaft. The blood supply starts at the profunda femoris artery. If someone is profound, then they're deep. They read poetry, they listen to jazz, and so this artery is the deep artery of the thigh. As it heads distally, it gives off circumflex vessels that wrap around the proximal femur. From here, small retinacular branches travel proximally to supply the head. So this is what we'd expect to see in an adult, but in children, we see something different. For this drawing, we'll start off exactly the same, so just draw the femur as before. However, before we add the blood supply, we need to add one extra detail. Because if children's bones are still growing, we'll have a disc of cartilage, known as a growth plate, just here. Now, this presents a problem. We can draw the vessels in as before, but those retinacular vessels aren't able to cross the growth plate, and can only provide blood up to here. So, how do we get blood supply to the head? Well, in children, there's an extra vessel, a branch of the obturator artery, known as the foveal artery, that enters the head here. This means that children have two blood supplies to the proximal femur, one below the growth plate and one above. Once the bone stops growing, this growth plate disappears, and those retinacular vessels can travel all the way to the head. At this point, the foveal artery will still be there, but at around the age of 40 to 50 years, that artery will disappear. So, why do you need to know about these two blood supplies? Well, these differences can become really important if someone suffers a fracture in this area. Let's imagine we have two patients, one young and one old, and they both suffered a displaced fracture of the femoral neck. Now, you have two options for how you to treat them. You should either try and reattach the two ends of the bone using a dynamic hip screw, or you could get rid of the femoral head completely and replace it with a prosthesis. Ideally, you'd like to save the femoral head, but you need to make sure it has good blood supply. The last thing you want is the patient to return with a vascular necrosis of the hip. Which option should you take? In the young patient, we had those two blood supplies. Although a fractured neck may disrupt the retinacular vessels coming up, the head should still receive a good blood supply via the foveal artery. Therefore, you can hopefully reattach the two ends with a dynamic hip screw. In the older patient, we only had the retinacular vessels. A fracture in the neck can disrupt these vessels, completely cutting off the blood supply to the head. If you try and reattach the two ends, there's a good chance the head will die. So, your best option is to replace it entirely. So, that's why the blood supply to the head of femur can be so important. If you're ever faced with a fractured femoral neck, Remember to consider the age of the patient and think about these two blood supplies before you decide how to treat them. Good luck.